Hello everyone. Welcome back to Streaming Alchemy. I'm John Mahoney and on today's show we're going to be using scripting, traditional vMix scripting, to populate a live weather map for a multi-day forecast. But before we get to that, I'd like to invite everybody, if you have any questions, have any feedback, please just post them in the comments below. We'd love to respond to you right here during the show. Also, if you would like to join us for the show, uh, you can come and be part of the program audio video here in the studio. So just connect to the link. It's also in the show notes and uh, somebody here will get you on air and we can discuss any sort of topic you want around what uh, we're doing here. So let's get started. Uh, first, we just I just want to say I see Rudy Engels joined. So Rudy, uh, thank you for coming in and join us for the live show. Definitely appreciate that. So let's start by looking at what we're going to create. So I've taken in vMix and I put together a title that will uh, populate off of a set of web-based data and provide a weather map with a five-day forecast. And so that, that looks like this over here. So if we can switch to that. So what we have is we have information coming in from each day for each day uh, and we are going through that and pulling out specific elements of that data and populating it into a, a GT title to fill in essentially this entire uh, screen. And we have the ability to swap around so I could go over and pick What's the weather like in Berlin or Anchorage, Alaska? So we set this up so we can move around as well very easily. And we'll cover all this by doing some scripting. But before we get into the actual scripting, which is probably you know the interesting part for, for this show, uh, I want to cover a few other things. So, so first, we're using, to get this weather data, we're using a site called Open Weather. I believe the URL is openweathermap.org. So this actually has both free and paid subscriptions that open up different API capabilities and different request rates. So with the free account, which is what we set up for this show, we can do up to a thousand requests a day. So that was fine for what we wanted to do for demonstration purposes. But if we were doing this professionally, we would definitely want to do something with one of their paid programs, which I believe give you up to 3,000 requests per minute. So definitely covers anything you would need on that front. And the great thing about open weather, besides the fact that they, they do make a lot of free open APIs for you to use for doing these types of productions, they have a whole range of API types here. So you can do things which get the current weather, get uh, everything about the weather in a single call. That's their one call API. Uh, they also do like long range forecasts. So a lot of different things are, are in here and it can come back in either JSON or XML format. Now, when we started this show, we were originally looking at doing it in JSON uh, as a way to introduce that as a new data type to bring in. But we just couldn't find enough supported calls inside of the earlier versions of .NET that are supported by vMix. So we instead switched this over to do it in XML. But uh, hopefully, you know, even though we're not covering JSON, we'll get to do that in a, another show in the future with something that, that works more compatibly with what we wanted to demo. So. Uh, definitely, I would check these folks out. I think uh, Open Weather looks like a, a great site if this is something that you could be using in your productions. So uh, the other piece is we're taking this data in and we're populating a title template. So let me go over and open GT Title Designer here. And so this is the template that we're populating. And we've gone through 
uh, GT title designer before, so I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time here. But it's definitely you know worth understanding how this is set up for us to leverage it inside of the scripting. So the first thing we did is we actually built. So let me just actually start to shut some of these things off. We set things up as layers here, uh, and so we can we can treat them as as big blocks. So the first thing we did is we set up a background, and this background is is basically set up as we have the location, which is the label up here. So when we call up a weather forecast, we will be putting the location, the name of the location that that forecast is for, up in that upper right-hand corner. We also have a background here. So the background is just these clouds here. Uh, and that's something that you can easily replace or do something dynamically, and I, I will show that. Uh, and then we just have this overlay with the five-day forecast that we put in. So we, we layered these things in as our background. And then for each day, let me just sort of turn them on a day at a time here. So for each one of these, oh, let me put this over the background. So this is for day one, day two, and they're, they're all sort of just identical except for their positioning here. So when we have all these on, what we now have, uh, and it may be a little hard to see, but I, th I think you, you, you can sort of figure this out as we go along. The, you have a, a day, which is set up as a layer inside of GT Title Designer, and then all the assets that we need to cover the data for that day. So we have uh, the wind direction, the cloud, what the cloud cover is going to be like. We have how humid, what's the temperature, what's the feel of the temperature. Uh, what icon do we use to sort of show what the weather is going to be like up at the top. So all of these are set up as uh, individual elements inside of that layer for each one of the days. And what you'll notice is that for day two here, all of these elements end in the number two. And for day three, they all end in the number three. So we've set this up so that when we are pulling this information out, we know exactly what elements inside this title template would need to be updated with the data we're touching at any given point in time. So with that as sort of a background, let's dive into the actual code that we're going to be working with. So let me get out of here. I got the DMIX over here. And let me go into, uh, we have the XML that I want to start with. So when we <coughs> get a response from Open Weather, it's actually sending us back this XML, essentially this XML file that we see. So it's just a stream XML stream that's coming in over the web. And it all starts with weather data, then breaks things down with location, and uh, then some basic metadata about when this was last updated, uh, when sun rises for that region that we're in, and then the forecast that we have. And the way these forecasts are set up in XML is they give you five days of forecast and Every forecast, they give multiple forecasts. So there's eight each day, once every three hours, starting at midnight. So you can see here, the forecast starts with a time from and to. So this is starting from midnight up to uh, 3 a.m. So what we wanted to do in this case was just take the temperatures and all the weather conditions at 3 p.m. for each day. And this sort of let us hit the sort of the sweet spot, that would usually be the high temperature of the day, somewhere right around there. So it let us sort of capture uh, a good approximation of what the overall temperature will be for that day. So that's the, the content that we're dealing with. And again, you can see this is all very well-formed XML. So if we now jump into the scripting, we'll show how we handle all of this. So 
right at the top, we do what we usually do when we set up something to work with vMix, and that is we go in and we load in the vMix XML. So this lets us look at everything that's happening inside of vMix. We are actually doing something very, very limited. The only thing we're really doing in terms of data inside of vMix is we're going to read dynamic values, and we're using dynamic value one. And in dynamic values, in dynamic value one, we're putting the zip code and the country code of the region that we want to take the forecast from. And we use that in making our API call. So if we go through here, all we're doing is we are defining, after we load the XML, uh, the vMix XML, we set up a variable zip code as a string, and we are pulling that dynamic value, the inner text, which is the actual text inside the value, and storing that in the zip code. So that gives us the first piece of information that we need to pull out of vMix. But really, that's about the only thing we're taking from vMix. Everything else will just be setting things up in the title template later on. So in most cases, you know, you always want to be sure you have, you know, you're not going to crash the system or do something uh, that could cause issues. So the first thing we do is we check if that dynamic value hasn't been set yet. And if it does, I if it is blank, we actually just go and set it to uh, basically 10001, which is sort of the base zip code in the U.S., where the first post office was in the United States. So we just set it to that, and that's in New York. So that gives us a guarantee that we'll always have a, a zip code in there. And then we actually go and start to pull in the XML data from open weather. So before I get into that, let me just jump up to the comment section again. So uh, we said hi to Rudy. So we have Peter from Berlin. Peter, thank you again for joining us here. Uh, we have David. Uh, always cool to see you here. So I appreciate you joining. And, uh, and we have Sharuka. So Sharuka, thank you for joining us from Pakistan. Definitely appreciate you making the time. And great to see you here. Okay, so let's jump back in and uh, talk a bit more about, about the data that we're pulling in. So what's really cool is that we can load XML into uh, basically the Visual Basic inside of vMix, either by opening a file, which we've done before, or we can open a URL. And that's what we're doing in this case. So in this case, we're setting up this URL as request war, which is going to be sort of the request string we're using to access this. And in there, we have the whole first part of the URL link, which basically is given to us by Open Weather to configure how we make a call. Uh, but the one thing we needed to do is we needed to add in the zip code. So in pulling this string, where we have to insert the zip code, we take and pull the value we pulled from the dynamic value and plug that in as the zip code. And then we end it by saying uh, we want uh, to use imperial units. So we could have used uh, metric or imperial. Since we're in the US, we chose imperial, but it could be uh, anything that you'd want for your region. And we ask for the information in XML. So we have mode XML here as well. And then the last thing we needed to do uh, was add our app ID. So in this case, uh, we just said you have to add your app ID. This will be a long GUID, a long key, unique key that you will get from Open Weather to plug in. So when you make these requests, uh, they can track it against your account and know what information they can share with you. So this is us basically setting up the URL we need to do this query. And these types of queries are often called like RESTful APIs, where you're just putting a URL in and then you're expecting data back. So it's a very straightforward, very basic way to do a web request. And we are going to store this information, since we know it's going to be coming in XML, as an XML document, just like we did with the everything that's coming in from vMix, where we set that up as an XML document as well. Uh, and then we're going to take 
we create this as, as an XML document and then use the method load with this URL string we built. And that will now load all of the information that we saw. And if you remember we over here, this is exactly what is getting loaded into weather.xml. Uh, so we have a weather XML over here. So everything that we want to do with methods to manipulate that XML, we're going to do to weather XML here. So, but that's it. So it's very simple to pull in XML data from a URL. It's, you know, three lines of code here to do that. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, generate a, a, a node list. And as I mentioned, we're looking at the weather that's coming in at basically 3 p.m. every day. And let me, I'm going to pop back and forth between the XML and the code here. So in the XML, you can see right here, they list the time that each of these forecasts are coming from. So what we want to do is we want to look for all of the forecasts with a from time of, well, basically be 3 p.m., so 1,500. So we can scroll down here a bit. And so right here is would be the first uh, forecast we're getting from this time frame, which would be 3 p.m. So the way we're doing this is we are saying, go in and look for all the weather forecasts associated with records, XML records, that contain, XML nodes effectively, that contain the time in from of 1500. So what this is going to do is going to go through all the XML we have and just pull those forecast records for the time at 1500. And since that's only once a day, we know we're going to get one record for each day at 3 p.m. with 3 p.m.'s weather in it. So that's basically what we did here. So in the daily forecast, which is just basically a node list, a, a, a list of XML nodes, uh, we've taken all of the 3 p.m. forecasts for the next five days, which is what this API provides, and we've placed them into daily forecast. And so now we've got exactly what we want loaded into the script inside of vMix. So let's jump back for a second and uh, just say hi to everyone who's joined us. So we have uh, JP has joined us, JP from Cape Town. So thank you, JP. Uh, we have Kyle. Kyle, great to have you here. And we also have Justin from Las Vegas. So. Justin, uh, great to have you joining us. Uh, I'm not sure whether you've joined us before, but if this is your first time, we definitely appreciate you making the time to, to pop in here and to say hello. This is always great. So, and we also have uh, Giltel Productions from Venezuela. So everybody from Giltel, thank you for watching. We definitely appreciate this. All right, so back to the code. So. Now that we've loaded up everything we need for the five-day forecast that we want to put into our title template, now we just start pulling information out of it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to pull the location that this forecast is for. So when we made the query, we know that we had a zip code, and we put that zip code in there in the query. But we don't actually have a location name for that. But if we switch back here and go to the very top, you'll notice that right at the top of the XML we have here, there is location and it has the name of the location that uh, we put in. So what we need to do here is we're just going in and grabbing that as a select a single node, which means just give me the data from this one node and we're just pulling it out as uh, basically as raw string. And then we are using a method called to upper, which makes that string, which could be mixed case, all into uppercase, because we want that you know, cleanly up in the top, all uppercase. So this is going to give us uh, an easy way to pull that in. And we use this right away at the beginning, because as we start to populate, before we do each day, we want to put the location on the map, uh, on the title that we're displaying for the, the weather map here. 
So we also uh, declare a temp string that we're going to use because even though we're getting this data back, all of it isn't exactly in the format we want. So when we get certain elements in, especially around temperature, we want to be able to reformat those elements to make them look the way we want. And so we're just creating a temp string that we use to do that. So now we're going to go through and create a group of arrays that will hold different pieces of information for the weather. So that's what we have in this next section here. So we start with everything from the day of the week, which I'll talk about in a moment, uh, to the real temperature and the field temperature, which is sort of, if you're, if you know from like wind chill factors and other things, that would be what it feels like when you're out versus the actual temperature being measured. We have the humidity, what the cloud cover is like, what the wind gusts are like, and then an icon URL, which actually has sort of an icon for what the weather is like that day generally. And so we actually are creating these as separate uh, arrays with five slots, one for each of the days. And we're going to go through and pull these specific pieces of information, fully formatted, and put them into these each of these arrays as strings. So we do this by, we used to set up a couple of pointers, reference pointers here. Not really like pointers in a, in a programming sense, but ways that we track things. So the first is counter, and that's what we're going to use for walking through each one of the feeds, or each one of the XML nodes that has the data we want. And then we're also doing something that we set up as index. And so a little point here in programming, there were two ways that things are counted. They're either zero indexed or one indexed. And what that means is if it's zero indexed, it means that you're doing an offset from something. So the first item is offset zero because it's, it's the first item. And then the second item would be offset one because it's one unit away from the initial. So it's sort of a weird way, a very techy way of counting, but it gives you a, usually arrays are going to be zero, one, two, three, four. So that would be a five element array and how you'd go through that. Inside of our title template though, when we set up in GT Title Designer, we sorted them as day one, day two, day three, sort of more of the ordinal way that we would track things logically. So counter is our way of saying which element in the string arrays are we talking what about? And index is our way of saying which element inside the title are we referring to, day one, day two, day three. So one is zero index, the other is one index. But just something to, to point out here. So the first thing we're going to do now is we're going to write out the text into GT Title Designer for our location, because we do that once. It's for all, the, all five days. So before we even go into a loop for anything, we're going to write out this, uh, this location. And we're using the API function setText. And setText allows us to say which input is the title in, uh, what is the name of the element inside of that title that we want to assign the text to, and then we actually say what is the value, what's the text we want to assign to that. So in this case, it's location.text. Now, this .text extension is very important. Inside of GT Title Designer, we call this element location, but in terms of referencing it programmatically, you have to say, I'm referring to this location, and since it's text, dot text. And it will take and leverage that now to replace the text that we had in there, which was just the word location. We're going to replace that now with the actual location that the particular uh, forecast is coming from. So that's the only sort of single thing that we're doing. Now we're running in to a loop to go through each one of the five days. So we start with a for loop, which is a, a great way to do this. And we are using counter. Remember, I said that's the zero index. So we start at zero. And we go to up to daily forecast, which is where we put the XML we want to look at. So that's an XML node list. So XML node list uh, is going to have a 
count, which says how many elements are in this node list. So there are five elements in the list, because this is basically doing a regular count. Uh, but because it's a zero index, we have to subtract one, so it knows to only go up to zero, one, two, three, and four, and then break away there. So this is just doing that looping. And now we go through zero, one, two, three, and four, and then break away there. So this is just doing that looping. And now we go through each one of the XML elements and pull it into the string arrays that we set up that correspond. So we start with the day of the week. So this was, this was an interesting one. This was the most indirect one. If we look inside, I'm going to swap back to the XML now. If we look inside of the XML, you can see that it is giving us a date here. Uh, this information right here is saying the year, the month, and the day. So we need to know what day of the week it is. And so there are function calls inside of visualbasic.net that will allow us to go in and do that conversion. So as I switch back to the code now, what it's doing is we are taking the from element, which is the time and the date combined. We're splitting it at the T uh, and just taking the first part of this. And so that's giving us just those year, month, day with the dashes between. And from there, we are pulling that in, uh, parsing it as part of date time. So we're taking that date time and then we're asking it to give us the day of the week. So right over here, we're saying, give us this day of the week for this date that we just cut out. So a, a little bit confusing this, we, we will post these scripts, uh, but essentially all we're doing is taking that string, cutting out the first part of it, passing that into a function, a, a date time specific processing function inside of .NET and asking it to say, given this date, tell us what day of the week this is, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And that's what we're getting. And then we're converting that to a string and asking us to take that string and make it all uppercase. So a little confusing uh, in terms of what it's doing, but very straightforward in terms of how it's being done. So, uh, and this is giving us, so the top label that you have, which has the each day label across the top of the weather map. So now we're going and we're pulling out the temperatures. So we have the real temperature and we have what we call the field temperature, what it feels like. So for the real temperature, we're putting that into that temp variable. If you remember, it's not temperature as, uh, as temp as temperature, it's temp as temporary. So we're pulling the actual numerical temperature out, which is a value. And then what we're doing is it's a string value. And it also isn't a whole number. So this would give us something like, you know, 72.38 degrees, which is not something that outside of scientists, regular people don't make decisions around those types of fractional components. So what we're doing is we're converting that text into a, uh, a double, you know, a, a double with integer or double with value. And then we are rounding it up or down to the nearest whole integer and then converting that back to a string. So a little bit of math, but basically pretty simple uh, functionality here. Take and get the temperature in, round it uh, to the nearest whole number, convert it back to a string, uh, and set that to the real temperature. And we're doing the identical thing to uh, the field temperature. And the other thing that we're doing is we are appending uh, a degrees Fahrenheit at the end of it. So this gives us that when we want to display it, we don't have to try to line this up with having the degrees Fahrenheit be part of the template, the GT title designer template, and the number coming from the program. Now we can do it all in the script, and it will center nicely and, and balance great, no matter how many digits there are in the temperature. So we do that for both the real temperature and the field temperature. And then the other things we do now are going to be a little more straightforward. So we'll pull out the humidity 
And again, it's just going to be a percent. So we take the humidity as an item, we uh, get the value, and we append a percent to it. And so we're just getting what percent humidity. And the last two elements are, are kind of interesting. They're, uh, they're basically more emotive elements. So it's how, what's the cloud cover like? It's partly cloudy. It's, you know, so you get that sort of thing. So we're, we're pulling that information, converting it all to uppercase, so it's nicely formatting. And we're doing the same with the wind conditions, which uh, even though it comes to something called wind speed, we're really getting something, uh, you know, like mild gust or strong winds or, you know, that sort of more descriptive term as opposed to a, a technical value. And we're pulling those and putting those into this array. Uh, and the final thing we're doing is there is also, they have icons that they use to identify sort of the, the visual look you want to give for the weather in a particular day. And so all we're doing is we're creating a URL which has the exact URL they supply that icon in. The icon name, which comes in as item symbol in the XML file, uh, that will basically be the file name that we need to pull uh, and appending .png to it. So we've created a URL with that points to the icon we want to show for that day's weather. Uh, so this now is all the things that uh, we've formatted and pulled out. And now we want to start to assign them to all of the fields inside of GT Title Designer. So as I mentioned, GT Title Designer is sort of one index. So we just say index is going to be whatever the counter is, which is zero index, plus one. So right now, if we're doing the zero element uh, inside of a GT Title Designer, we're going to refer to that as index one. And so we are just using very standard uh, vMix function calls, the set text, which we used already to set up the location. So we're going there and we're selecting which element I want to change. But unlike when we did it for the location where that was just a fixed element, uh, we now need to use text, uh, uh, use this index to append to the name of the text element that we want to change. So if we want to change the label day, like we're doing here, that element is called label day one, label day two. So we are going label day as the string, adding the index converted to a string, and then adding the dot text to the end of it. So now in this function, we are changing it based on which iteration of the loop. We're doing it for day one, two, three, four, five. We are changing that index number which allows us to dynamically assign the text to the different columns inside GT Title Designer. And that's all we're doing here. So that's the, the only fancy trick here is adjusting the index, but we're just going through and doing these assignments for each one of these text elements. And then the last thing, which is a little different, is we're doing, instead of set text, we're calling the function set image, which is going to do the same for a non-text media element inside of GT Title Designer. And so, again, same sort of thing, set image. We're pointing to the GT Title there. We're saying, what is the icon URL? So this is a URL that will have that image that we're going to be using here. Uh, then it's, uh, I believe that's the zoom factor. And then we're saying, so which field is are we replacing the image in and again the same thing with we're adding the icon for the weather for the day and we're doing it for index one up to five uh, and instead of ending this with dot text for these non-textual elements you end it with dot source so we've constructed that and we do this now we have a next here and that just brings us back to the top of our for loop Everything increments by one, and we just go through the process again. So that basically 
allows you to pull everything out from the XML and populate the title template with doing some reformatting. Uh, so if you looked at this and said, gee, could I have just brought the XML into GT Title Designer using a Data Source Manager? The answer is yes, but you wouldn't be able to uh, reformat things. So I couldn't have fit told you which day was at the top. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you wouldn't get that. You wouldn't get Fahrenheit with degrees. You wouldn't, you know, these types of element reformats that we did, uh, you know, like, because we had to go and convert things to a number, round them. There you said that with the temperature. None of those things would have worked. So you would have pulled the raw data from the source. So in using scripting, we were now able to get this to look exactly the way we wanted to and adjust these values very simply based on how we wanted to set all that up. So that's really the model that we used here. So how are we driving this then? So if I actually go in and look in what we're doing over in vMix. So we set the script up. And so this is, this is just driven off of uh, uh, an a, a stream deck here. So we have a, a very easy way to pull everything in. But if, if I come over here and show you what we have as our shortcuts, start over there. So we have things that allow us to pick which location do I want. So I have like Anchorage, Alaska, New York, London, Paris, Berlin, here where we are in the studio. And then I can run the script. And these are all just shortcuts we did. So if you look at how we set up, uh, let's just look at Berlin. So Peter's here, so we'll, we'll, we'll do Berlin. Uh, I believe Peter's from there. We set this up with a postal code and a country code. And so that would get set to that dynamic value. And if you remember, that dynamic value is how we uh, pulled out the location we wanted to do the call against inside scripting. So all we're doing is we can use a key press to pick the location that we want. And that allows us now to uh, easily switch locations. So here, if you remember, I could go and say, so there is, uh, I just set Berlin. And so I can swap that. I can go to Paris and show you the temperatures there. If you like it a little cooler, we can go up to Anchorage, Alaska, and uh, temperatures are a little bit colder up north. So there are lots of different ways to uh, to do this. But this can be something where if you're doing different regions in in you know the area that you're you're serving with the production, you could just pull in the different zip codes all around a specific area and then then cover that sort of very directly for that. The other thing, uh, which I think is, is, is interesting, is if you remember when we set up the, when we set everything up inside of GT Title Designer, we had an image as the bottom layer. I do have through a uh, the set image on and set image off, I can turn that layer on and off. So right now, I just had a cloud image back there. But if I wanted to shut that off, I could actually have a moving image behind this. So this is just using this as an overlay on top of another video that we're playing in the background. And you could, you can not just turn this on and off, but you could assign different things to it. So this would give you the ability based on the weather that was going on in a region or the time of day you were covering to change that background image and make it sort of correspond if it's rainy out, if it's sunny out, if it's nighttime, if it's early morning, to do imagery behind that dynamically that you would be able to make adjustments to. And that could be something that you could do right in the script. So we didn't do anything scripting with that. But that is certainly something that you would have available to you in the, in the script. And then, you know, I can just press a button and turn that background back on if I wanted to. So it gives you different ways to leverage this type of uh, layout. So this is really everything I wanted to cover here. Uh, it handles a lot of different things. You know, as, as, as we set this up, this was really much more about looking at ways to manipulate titles 
without using Data Source Manager, but still achieving these same types of results. And the, the advantage, as I mentioned, is that you get to manipulate the data. You don't just map it, you manipulate it, make decisions around it, and then plug it in to what you want. So we think that's very, very powerful for these types of, of, of data sources you can pull from the web. And it lets you do different things that you, you can then add value to. So before uh, we wrap the main show, though, let me just catch up to see. Uh, so we have Lee Love. Lee, uh, it is always great uh, to have you join us here. Uh, I am honored that uh, you took the time to, to pop in. Lee uh, has some great stuff going on. So if you go to Lee Love uh, TV, uh, definitely check out the things that Lee is doing around photography and photo mentor. So definitely great stuff there. Uh, so let's see. We have uh, uh, Jawad, Jawad from Stockholm. Uh, great, to, great to see you here. I, I should have, I should have put uh, Stockholm into here as one of the uh, as 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 one of the regions we were covering for weather. But thank you for joining us. Uh, so we have uh, Rudy just mentioned. Uh, he says he's going to rewatch the index explanation. Uh, but uh, he said great stuff again. So. Thank you. We uh, we definitely appreciate that feedback. Uh, and uh, so Peter gave us a smile for covering Berlin. So <laughs> so thank you. thank you, Peter. Uh, and uh, you know, Rudy's mentioned it's it, he likes you know the the concept of reuse for for other things. I think that's really what we are trying to do here. I'm sure that there are not a lot of people who are specifically going to be using this for something like weather, but there may be things you would be doing with this for sports statistics, fantasy football, uh, you know, different types of drafts, election coverage, where you may be getting data that's coming from a remote site and you want to do this type of reformatting and publishing into your own graphics template. So hopefully this stirs some ideas in there. So uh, let's see, we have Sisse has uh, popped in, Sisse. Hello back. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and uh, Bill Corkery. Uh, yes, the San Diego weather is so consistent. Uh, so Bill is an audio engineer uh, par excellence. He is he is he is one of the, uh, the 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 good guys on on so many fronts, both technically and just the time I've got to spend with him personally. So Bill, thank you for popping in. And yes, you you do have pretty consistent and spectacular weather out there. Except I like it cold, so <laughs> it wouldn't fit for me. But uh, all right then. So uh, we're going to wrap up the main show, and we're going to hang around post-show to go into anything you want to discuss in addition to what we covered here or you know, dive into any area here in more detail. So we will be back next week. If you can't join us, thank you very much for making the time now. And if you can join us, We'll be back in just a couple of seconds. So we'll see you soon. Take care, everyone. Uh, welcome back, everybody. So uh, this was a fun show. Uh, we try to find things that are doable for us in a in a, in the limited time we have, but also that we think we can sort of layer some broader information behind that can be, you know, as, as Rudy pointed out, that that does have some reuse cases here. So, and as I mentioned, it, this was interesting. We we went in because we said we really haven't done much with JSON. And it would be good to do a show on that. And so originally, we were searching for what are great sources of JSON data. Uh, but when we started looking at, you know, we were pulling it from, you know, open weather, and that was great. There no no problem at all getting the information there. But the capabilities inside the scripting seemed to be fairly limited. And we thought that instead of showing you something that made sense as a JSON introduction, it would just get confusing with scripting because 
we'd have to be doing a lot of manual cutting and you know reassembly and searching that we couldn't uh, you know really get the type of show we wanted. So we did it using XML. Uh, the XML stuff works fine, but uh, I do want to get to a show where we cover JSON because uh, it format for a lot of the manipulation that would be going on. I mean, it's built around JavaScript, so you know it's it's sort of tied very closely with web programming generally. So it will be something we'll get to, but uh, hopefully, even though this was all XML based, the the scripting part uh, proved interesting. So so we hope. But please, your feedback is great. So if there are other things in this area that you'd like us to cover, please let us know. But right now, I'd really like to open this up if there are, are any questions people have, any comments, anything they'd like to jump in and uh, and share. So, so there's been a few things that have been going on. Well, I give everybody a chance to get your questions in. A few things that have been going on is over the past weeks, and probably the one that's impacted us in terms of plans that we had for the month of October, which it's hard to believe we're in already, uh, is that the NAB show was canceled. And as I had mentioned in a couple of shows previously, that we were going to be doing live broadcasts from the show floor for each day. And so we're going to. We're not going to get a chance to do that this time. They are, you know, hopefully we'll we'll get invited back for April, which is the next show that we're going to have uh, for NAB. But uh, I just want to let everybody know that we were really planning on uh, trying to do some stuff that tied together bigger trends inside of the production industry and that we'd then be able to layer in potentially interviews with people that we'd see at the show or other things. So since we're not going to do that, we are going to look at other things that we can do show-wise here. So this is any things that you have that you would like to see us start covering that we haven't or you'd like us to do in more depth. Or the other way around, because I, I know sometimes I can get lost in talking with people at a more technical level. Sometimes there are people out there who would much prefer some foundational shows where we cover some basic stuff that I may be glossing over in doing the more technical shows. So please let me let me know what would work for everyone. So well, I don't see any more questions coming in. So I guess we we covered everything that we needed to cover this week and there aren't any outstanding Things. So, all right, everyone. So I appreciate you hanging around. It's going to be a short post-show here today, but I definitely appreciate you making the time to spend it with us on Friday afternoons, out time, Friday nights for a lot of you. And uh, that's something we, we always appreciate. And it, it, for some, it could even be Saturday. So I believe uh, we had somebody coming in from Pakistan. So uh, that's probably, it might be, it might be a Saturday over there. So thank you all. appreciate you making the time and we'll see you for another show next week. Take care, everyone.